Hey guys, it's Matt with Frugal Chicken here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make goat milk soap without using lye. So stay tuned. So we're back in the house now, and I am going to show you how to make soap without using any lye. So the first thing you're going to need for this is a soap base. And this soap base is specifically goat milk soap base. You can read right there, it says goat milk. And you know you can get soap bases in anything. You can get it in just glycerin, you can get it you know, in, in really anything you want. But for this project, we're going to use goat milk soap. So what this is, is it's basically soap. You can just use it straight out of the jar or out of the can. But it is, it's just prefab soap is what it is. And they've done all the work for you. They've used the lye for you because you just you can't make soap without lye. That's just how it is. So if you don't want to use lye, you can use soap base. Um, and what you do is you, it's called the pour and melt soap base. So basically what you do is you pour it and you melt it in the a double boiler. I'll show you the double boiler in a second, but you melt it in a double boiler and then you just pour it into your mold. But before you pour it into your mold, you can add anything you want. So today what we're going to do is we are going to use honeysuckle essential oil um, for the scent. And we are going to also use some oatmeal. And if you haven't seen what these bars look like on my Instagram account, um, I'll put the link in the show notes um, below this video and you can see what those actually look like but it's a really awesome combination that you know a lot of people seem to like i like it it smells great the honeysuckle smells great so that's basically the ingredients you're going to use when you're making your homemade soap your homemade soap without lye that is so like i said what you want to do is you want to take your soap base and you're going to melt it in a double boiler and if you don't know what that is it is it looks like this basically it's two pots and your first pot holds water and your other second pot will hold your soap base. Now I have, um, I have pots, which is this pot right here, that's specifically designated for soap. And the reason for that is um, because the lye is caustic. And in a pour and melt soap base, that's not really going to happen. It's not really such a big issue because it's already soap that's cured and it's not going to harm you in any way, you, know, you can use it straight out of the box. But for best practices, it's recommended to have utensils and pots that are only for making soap. So that's why I do it. So even though it's, the soap base is safe, I still use a pot designated specifically for soap making just because it's a best practice. So what you're going to do is when you get your um, pour and melt soap base, and I got this from from I got this one from Bulk Apothecary, and you can get it also. I bought some from Cultures for Health, and that's that's a good place too. And I'll put links in the the I'll put links below where you can buy these. You can also get really good um, soap base on Amazon, and I'll put a link to that also. But this one came from Bulk Apothecary, and what you want to do is when you get it, you open it up, and you want to score it. You can see that you can score it, and this just makes it easier to get it out of the canister it makes it easier to melt it um, the smaller the pieces are when you melt it the easier it is and the faster that it melts so you want to score it like this i just take a knife and again this is a knife that is specifically designated for soap making and i just you know insert it and then pull down and then i cross hatch it if you can see that right there okay um, and again it just makes it easier to get out and it makes it easier to uh, melt it so once that's done i just pop it out as you can see the whole thing comes out and you can score it after you you know pop it out i do it before um to make it just easier so it will slip and slide um and then i just start breaking it apart see just going right across and what i do is when it's out like this i make them even smaller and the reason for that is again just to make it faster it melts faster and it melts more consistently um so let me go ahead and do that and i'll be right back Okay, so I've now cut up the soap, and you can see I've put it into about one inch, half inch cubes. And again, I just do this to make it easier for it to melt, and it melts more cohesively. Um, so what I do is I put it all in the top pot, my double boiler, and again, in the double boiler below is water. As the water heats up, it will melt the soap that's on the top. And at that point, you can add your 
essential oils, whatever you want to add. You can add flowers, you can add uh, lavender, you can add whatever you want to it. Um, today we're going to use honeysuckle essential oil and um, oatmeal for our soap, but you can add anything you want. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to change the angle of the camera so that you can better see what's going on in the double boiler. So just hang with me one second and I'll be right back. So now our goat milk soap base has melted and as you can see it just looks like goat milk, looks like soap, um, melted soap that is. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put it into the mold, add our essential oils and our oatmeal. And when it comes to mold, you can use any mold you want. Um, I personally recommend silicone molds because they're easy to flip over, it's not difficult to you know pour into and they're, and they're heat safe. Um, I have two molds here. My first one is this one, which is long and rectangular, and what you have to do with it is once you pop the soap out of the mold, you have to then cut it. And I also have this mold, which has prefabricated has prefabricated rectangles in it. Um, between the two, I prefer my pink long mold, and the reason why is because the blue mold, which has the prefabricated rectangles in it, makes the soap to the soap squares too large and it's you know not the right size for soap they're clunky and they're large and it's just it's just not easy um i also get more soap per two pounds of soap base in the the, the pink mold and like i said today we're going to use our honeysuckle essential oil and i don't personally have a particular brand of essential oil i use because i'm using it mostly for fragrance and a little bit for some of the natural benefit i'm not so concerned with the brand of it. So to the next thing we're going to do in order to put our base into the mold, um, literally what you do is you just pour it in. Like I said, it's a pour and melt soap base. Now, as soon as you take the soap base off of the double boiler, it will start to cool down and solidify. It doesn't happen that fast, so don't worry too much about it, but that is the process that's going to happen. So I'm going to take it off the double off the heat and it literally is just pouring in now the first thing I need to do I did skip a step I like to use a funnel I like to use a plastic funnel like this um, the reason why is because it just makes it easier and more precise pouring into the mold so I literally just sometimes accidents happen it's just how it goes so I'll use the mold or the, the funnel. There you go. So now, get this out of the way. All right, so we have the soap in the mold and all I do is add just a little bit of essential oil. And I mean like two drops. I don't, you don't want to add that much of essential oil and the reason why, there's the essential oil, the reason why is because it is oil, so it will rise to the top. It doesn't mix quite so well, you know, if you add too much and then you oversaturate it. So I only add a couple of drops. I also don't want to overwhelm myself with the fragrance, so then I just stir it in. All right, and now at this point, I also add in the oatmeal. And you can add in as much as you want. It doesn't really matter how much you add in. I just sprinkle it in there. And then I'm going to stir it in. And sometimes the oatmeal will sink to the bottom, and sometimes it, but it will also remain, you know, interspersed throughout the soap. And I just stir it in. All right, now the next thing is, as you can see, you might not be able to see it too well in the video, but the soap mold is slightly bulging out in the middle here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm gonna take something on both sides and for example, my jar of salt and a thing of spices and I'm just gonna really just push it in just slightly so that it is perfectly straight so that the soap comes out perfectly straight 
Now what's going to happen next is I'm going to let this cool and when it's done cooling, I'm going to be able to just flip it over and pop it out and then start cutting it. I let it cure for two or three days because it's a soap base. It's different than regular soap. You don't have to cure it for three or four weeks or, you know, 10 weeks or six months like you do with soap that you make directly from lye. It is ready to use pretty much immediately. All right, so I'll be back in a couple days after it's cured to show you the final product of our goat milk, honeysuckle, and oatmeal and soap. All right, so here's an example of the honeysuckle and oatmeal goat milk soap we made. This is what it looks like. This is the final product. So you can see it's just, it looks just like regular soap. And it's got, there's some of the oatmeal. And you know, you smell it, you can smell the honeysuckle in it. It smells, the fragrance is not really heavy as it cures, the fragrance goes down, um, which is advantageous because when it first comes out of the mold, it's pretty overwhelming. And essential oils, because you know, if you take them internally or if you use them on their skin, sometimes they're caustic. It, it, with the honeysuckle, that's not such a concern, but if you use something like peppermint, which is a very hot essential oil or something like that, it is a little bit more of a cause for concern. So if you let it cure, the longer you let it cure, the less potent the essential oils are. And also the longer you cure, the more solid it is, the more you know, it, it's gonna stay intact in the shower. And again, it's less of a concern with the pour and melt soap base as than it is with the lye. We go with the lye, it has to cure for you know three, six months. With this, you know, it's just two or three days. But that, that's basically what it looks like. You can see it just looks like a regular bar of soap, but it's ready to use. It's goat milk soap, and it's, it's pretty awesome. So if you like this video, be sure to comment and like below. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, um, and hit the red subscribe button below. You can visit me also at my blog, which is thefrugalchicken.com for chicken-related articles, for soap-making articles, anything homesteading or DIY-related. You can get all sorts of information there. Um, I am also giving away free goodies on the website, so be sure to sign up for my email list, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.